Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode we're talking about Nick Chubb Future Outlook. Uh, so welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn. In today's episode, we'll be looking at the data of Cleveland Browns running back Nick Chubb to determine what his future NFL production is. Uh, so we're going to be getting into a lot of interesting stuff today uh, in terms of his profile. Stay tuned until the end of the video where we give an overall outlook and projection for him in 2024 and the future. But with all this stuff out of the way, let's get to the setup. So the setup is simply this. The Cleveland Browns drafted Nick Chubb 35th overall in the 2018 NFL Draft class. Um, since that time, Chubb has been selected to four Pro Bowls and has accumulated 6,511 rushing yards, 1,011 receiving yards, and 52 total touchdowns. Um, he's considered by many to be one of the best running backs in the NFL, and that production grinded to a halt when he suffered a serious knee injury in week two of the 2023 season against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So based on that injury, uh, you kind of are wondering, okay, what is it going to be like coming back from that? And there's a lot of different things you have to look at. And one of those things is age. Um, this is something that doesn't really get talked about a lot in terms of projecting NFL players, in terms of just understanding why age matters so much. And this is simply this. Uh, in terms of top five running back production performances from 1992 until 2022, you will see that there is a majority cluster of production in terms of age 24 to 26. Uh, and then around 27, you start to see a decline in terms of top five and top 10 performances. Uh, that decline increases at age 28, 29, 30, 31, and then pretty much it is unheard of for, them, for there to be a running back to have a number one overall running back, you know, production uh, uh, score once you enter into the 30s of, of the age. So, again, running back is a young position. Running backs peak around age 26 consistently. Uh, and this is a pretty – I can't even go further back than this. But uh, I, just to give you sort of the modern NFL, um, this is something that I think is important because uh, – Nick Chubb is getting up there in age. He's getting, he's basically in that area of downward slope in terms of what's expected from most running backs. And that's going to inform a lot of our uh, data today. Uh, so overall projection for Nick Chubb, you know, I, I would say Chubb, you know, before we get to the pre-draft profile, you know, Chubb is one of those running backs from 2019 to 2022 has been very productive. But he's entering this season at age 29. And he had a big drop in his production due to injury at age 28. That could be indicative of future drop-off long-term. But with this context in place, let's take a look at Nick Chubb's pre-draft profile, post-draft profile, to find insights into what the future might hold for Chubb. And the reason why we're looking at the pre-draft profile is because a lot of times the pre-draft profile can kind of tell us what he was expected to become based on his college production, which can kind of inform us about his NFL production. Uh, and then the post-draft data kind of shows you how he actually has performed in the NFL. Uh, so based on his pre-draft profile in terms of the offensive market share data at a college at Georgia, um, his overall, uh, you know, you look at his total offensive market share, receiving market share, and touchdown market share was all within the starter averages at the position, with the exception of the touchdown market share. That was definitely one thing that could have improved, but these are all solid numbers for a running back like him. Then when you get to efficiency scores, this is an area he did really well in. Uh, his yards per touch was fantastic. Yards per reception was great. And yards or touchdowns per touch was also above average. So even though he didn't have the best touchdowns, his efficiency was solid across the board, which is definitely something that you want to see out of a running back uh, like Nick Chubb. Then when you get to athleticism traits, this was something that was just fantastic about him, was that he was one of the most athletic running backs that we've seen over the course of the last 10-plus years. So his uh, explosive lower body strength score was 98 percentile. He had an 89 percentile speed score and an 85 percentile flexibility score. These are elite Pro Bowl level athleticism traits for a running back. Uh, so not only was he very productive, he also had the athleticism that you're looking for of a star player. Then when you get to adjusted production, so this data takes a look at Nick Chubb in terms of his age, his level of competition, and the team that he was on. And based on this data, his age wasn't the best coming out. 
but he did have a good MSA rating, and he did have a really good pass rating. A pass rating takes a look at all of his market share production plus his efficiency uh, scores plus age and all the other sort of metrics I told you about before. And the MSA rating kind of takes out the efficiency score. So in terms of the big three data points, his age was a little, mut, you know, not really where it needed to be, but you can easily see him being within the Pro Bowl and All-Pro averages in terms of his adjusted production traits. Now, when you get to his situational statistics, so before we kind of move on to post-draft, his situational statistics were just nasty. So this is taking a look at data from 2009 to 2023, and it's looking at 95 to 99 percentile NFL running back averages and also 90 to 94 percentile NFL running back averages in terms of, you know, attempts, yardage, average yardage, uh, 10 plus yard plays, 20 plus yard plays, uh, touchdown percentage, first down percentage, 10 yard percentage of, uh, of uh, 10 plus yard uh, runs and 20 plus yard runs. And he was just fantastic in everything. He gave you the true home run hitter, phenomenal athlete and his statistics in college really bear that out in terms of his data. And in terms of his conversion rate in first down, second down, and third down, all these areas also were very fantastic for him uh, based on these numbers right here. As we get into his NFL production, we're going to look at his rushing statistics and then his receiving statistics because I think both those things kind of need to be analyzed separately. Uh, but in terms of him as a rusher, he's been lights out probably one of the best running backs in the NFL in terms of just his ability to rush the football. Uh, when you take a look at him from 2018 to 2022, he was in the 90 percentile in terms of rushing yards in that time span. He was in the 90 percentile in terms of touchdowns during that time span. And from 2019 to 2022, he was also in the high 90 percentile in terms of first downs during that time span. So in terms of just his macro production as a rusher, he has been one of the best running backs over that time span. Uh, when you look at his other data, which takes a look at his efficiency score, so essentially it's a per snap look at you know yards before contact per attempt, yak per attempt, and then broken tackles per attempt. Easily one of the best running backs in terms of his ability to get yak after contact and also broken tackles. So he's just a running back's running back in many ways. He's incredibly athletic. And not only is he incredibly athletic, he breaks tackles and gets yards after contact with ease, which is definitely something that you really want in a running back prospect at the NFL level. Uh, then when you get to some other running back or rushing data for him, uh, TD percentage has been solid across the board. First down percentage has been a little uneven. You know, when you look at, you know, 2019 and, and 2022, he was above average, but he has been below average some years in terms of his ability to get first downs. Uh, and then in terms of macro production, 90 plus percentile again from 2018 to 2022, his efficiency has pretty much been in the 80 to 90 plus percentile range, uh, excluding 2023, you know, the injury year. And then his running back star rating, which takes a look at his production, plus his efficiency has been solid across the board. And he had his best season as a player in 2022 uh, in many ways with a 99 percentile running back star score uh, because of that. So again, in terms of his overall data, Really solid numbers across the board and really had a phenomenal year in 2022. When you look at his receiving production, not as much. So he is a good receiver. He has okay production in terms of being a receiver. Uh, but as you can clearly see, he's above average but not really like elite. So again, nobody would confuse him with Marshall Falk or Christian McCaffrey or any number of other sort of reception backs, if you will. Uh, in terms of the data. But again, these are solid numbers across the board. He gets it done. It's just that he doesn't excel as a receiver. Again, if you remember correctly, he had 6,000 plus rushing yards and about 1,000 receiving yards. And again, this is indicative of those numbers here. Uh, when you look at his other data in terms of, you know, his per snap data as a, uh, uh, a player catching the football, his yak numbers have been decent, but his A dot, not so much. Broken tackle is definitely there. Uh, but for the most part, you know, yards before contact, A dot, stuff like that, he's just kind of a basic running back in many ways in terms of how he's used as a receiver, you know. Uh, dump off passes, swing routes, different stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. Again, nothing against him. It's just that, again, he's more of a rusher than a receiver, and it kind of shows up in the data. Now, when you get to his overall, you know, NFL receiving statistics, uh, the quarterback rating has been pretty solid across the board in terms, you know, when he's targeted, he does 
have above average, you know, give the quarterback an above average quarterback rating. Uh, his TD percentage has been decent. His first down percentage has been decent in terms of catching the football. His macro production, as you can see, hasn't really been the best. It's been okay, but not the best. And then efficiency, he was very efficient in 2020 and 2021. Uh, not so much in 2022, 2019, 2018, and of course 2023, which is the injury year. Uh, so again, most of these numbers is kind of what you would expect from a, a receiver who's not the best receiver in terms of production purposes, but definitely really good in terms of as a rusher. Um, taking a look at another aspect of him, uh, which is rushing statistic win correlations. So I, I rattled off all that statistics, and now you need to know why it matters. So in terms of data, uh, because I really wanted to create a score to, to score a running back based on the numbers that really matter, because you can look at all these statistics, you know, attempts, yardage, touchdowns, first downs, um, success percentage, all that kind of stuff, yards per game, uh, at, you know, all that kind of, you know, attempts per game, all that kind of stuff. But what matters in terms of winning football games? That's the biggest thing that I care about. Um, I understand fantasy football people. Um, I think there is a intersection of the two in terms of fantasy football and winning to win football games. But in terms of winning football games, the biggest thing that really matters in terms of rushing the football is touchdowns, success percentage, and yards per attempt. That's it. Those are the biggest things that really matter um, in terms of the running back position. And even then, they're not the most correlative either. You know, 0 0.08 is not that big of a correlation. It's positive, but it's not the biggest correlation uh, in terms of that stat. That's because rushing yardage is really not the most significant thing in the NFL. I'm going to do a video in the future actually covering that, but um, rushing just, you're not going to win as many football games if you're an above average rushing team versus an above average passing team in many ways uh, based on data. So that's just kind of how that you know turns out. Then we get to uh, receiving statistics. So when you take a look at receiving statistics for running backs, not there's a little inconsistent correlations here so things like targets and receptions aren't the biggest thing but touchdowns are good success percentage is decent uh, yards per target is also decent but for the most part rushing and running back are a little inconsistent in terms of correlations at the position but when you look at total production and touch statistic win correlations this is where things start to look a little bit better so one number that really correlates really well is the is the touchdown to fumble rate. So that's the FUM slash TD rate. Um, that definitely correlates to wins. Uh, and also the MICT score, which is the micro production score. It includes micro production for rushing and receiving. Uh, and then the CT score kind of combines both the macro and the MICT. Um, and then you have the running back uh, star score. But for the most part, you know, these correlations, again, are not the strongest. Wide receiver has much stronger correlations in terms of wins, and that's just because of the nature of the receiving position is going to lead to more wins. You know, when you have an above-average passing offense, you're going to have above-average wins on average more often than if you just have an above-average rushing offense. So that's always going to affect things. You know, that's why wide receivers are paid more than running backs to a certain extent. But this is kind of what the data says. And based on this information, uh, I was also able to kind of whittle down into the most important metrics, which are these ones right here um, in terms of statistics at the running back position uh, for that. And with all this information, um, I was able to correlate a score for Nick Chubb every season in terms of win correlation. So every year where he scored the best, in terms of his ability to win football games or helping the Browns win football games, uh, you know, scoring the best correlative in many ways with his statistics and also looking at his rankings there. This is how he's been as an NFL player. So from 2018 to 2019, he was about a top 17 to top 24 running back. But between 2020 and 2022, he was easily a top five running back and had a third rank in 2020 and in 2022 a sixth rank in 2021, but he had a drop off in his production in 2023, again, due to injury, uh, with 55 percentile in terms of that particular number. And again, this is based on correlative statistics, 
towards winning football games. Uh, not necessarily just the total overall production, but also how much they contributed to winning football games. Um, and based on that information, I went back in my database, and this is the power of data, like this is the power of it, is going back, looking, you know, making a parameter, making a, a sequence, if you will, and then testing it to see if there's anything there to kind of project future performance. And based on the data, these are all the running backs. I found 10 running backs who experienced a similar dip in production to Chubb from age 27 to 28, in addition to also having similar production uh, the prior season and then kind of seeing what they did after that season. Um, out of the 10 backs who experienced that reduction, only four backs bounced back from that reduction. And in most all cases, they did not improve upon their prior season. Uh, so what I mean by that is when you look at the four backs in particular who had a good season in, at, you know, at age uh, 27, and then they had a down year at age 28, and then they came back in, in, in uh, age 29, they didn't quite get back to the production that they had prior. So, for example, Dorsey Levins uh, had an eighth rank in terms of his correlative win statistics and then when he came back in 1999, after that down year in 1998, he only ranked 14th. Lamont Jordan had eighth best uh, season in 2005, followed by a 68th year in 2006, and then he came back and was only 18th. Nick Chubb is third. He had a 55 ranked season, uh, which was, of course, cut short due to injury. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you have uh, Rex Burkhead who had the, probably one of the biggest swings from 6 to 102 to 21. And then Ryan Grant also had a big swing from 4 to 113 to 20 for Ryan Grant. Big swing there in terms of correlative wins. Now, I think one thing you'll notice based on this is that there is a talent difference. So there is there is a difference between Nick Chubb and guys like Lamont Jordan and Rex Burkhead and Ryan Grant in terms of their overall production. And to adjust for that, the one running back who really stuck out as a comparable for Nick Chubb was Dorsey Levins. Uh, Levins, at age 25, had a fourth best correlative win season in 1995. He had the second best season in terms of wins, uh, in, in, you know, statistics that, that correlate to wins in 1996, and then eighth in 1997, and then he had a down year in 1998 at age 28, and then he came back and had a 14 year. I think Levens is probably the best comparison I could really make for Chubb. Now, again, I would say Nick Chubb has better overall data compared to Levens, but this just kind of gives you that scenario here that for the most part, by and large, when running backs have a really good season in you know, age 27 and then they have a down year in age 28, normally when they come back, they're not producing the same way that they were producing when they were younger. And that's just a fact of life. It doesn't matter what position it is. I could pull up wide receivers who have similar traits to that, uh, tight ends that have similar traits to that. Uh, it's not to say that they're not a, a valuable player. It doesn't mean that they can't still be a part of the football team or have contributions. It's just they don't quite get back to what they were in that age 24 to 26, 27 range. Is essentially what it is. Um, so again, like with Dorsey Levins, he had a down year. He came back and was 14th, and, but he was still in the NFL. You know, from 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, still had an NFL career after that, but never quite got back to a top two finish, a top four finish, a top eight finish. And that's the biggest thing to kind of take away from the data that I just presented. So the overall outlook for Nick Chubb, I think, is simply this. You know, Nick Chubb has the talent to bounce back from the injury he sustained in 2023. But the majority of backs who have a reduction in production at age 28 typically don't re recover back to their prior heights in the NFL. That's not to say that Chubb could not become like an Adrian Peterson-like recovery and become the top back in the NFL this year. But the data suggests a far more grounded uh, projection. So I would say in terms of projecting Chubb this year, uh, considering he's fully healthy, uh, I would say Chubb is likely to come back and produce like a top 10 to 20 running back in 2024. But I think the top five finishes may be a thing of the past. You know, the things that he was able to accomplish 
in that span from, you know, 2019 until 2022, I think those days might be over. And again, I, I hope I'm proved wrong, of course, because I do like to see players really, uh, you know, maximize their talent and really jump, bounce back in a major way. And, and definitely Chubb, out of all the running backs I presented uh, in the top 10 list uh, for similarities, you know, Chubb is the more talented player amongst them. He had the more prolific production compared to those guys, even Dorsey Levins. Um, but at the same time, er, nobody can outrun Father Time. And I think that, and that's okay, but I think you have to be more grounded in terms of your projections, projections with him. You know, So again, I, I think Chubb is definitely going to be a good player this year, but I don't believe he's going to get back to the production that he was putting up prior to that injury. I think that's just, when you compound injury plus age, it just doesn't look good there. So that is kind of how things are right now. But let me know in the comment section below, how do you guys feel about Nick Chubb? Do you feel like the injury is something where he's going to come back and kind of be an outlier in terms of the data, you know, where he's going to really outproduce and get back to a top five finish this year? Or do you kind of have more of a sentiment or a grounded sentiment that I have He's probably going to have sort of a 10-point swing. You know, he might finish as running back 14, running back 16, or running back 18 this year versus being in the top five at the position. But let me know. Let me know down below. And with all this stuff out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching. Check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash jcoburn. Also, check out my ex, formerly known as Twitter account, at Gemetrics. And with all this stuff out of the way, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.